This is Twit. This episode is brought to you by Gazelle, the online marketplace for buying and selling used gadgets. Shop from a variety of certified pre-owned electronics or trade one in for cash. Give a new life to a used device. Visit gazelle.com today. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 173. i5 covers the latest iPhone apps, tips, and tricks, and of course, some news. I am Megan Maroney, and today my news is that today this episode is the series finale of i5 for the iPhone. You might know that I also host iOS Today with Leo Laporte, and since the show has transitioned away from purely iPad topics to iPad and iPhone, we decided to fold this show into iOS Today so we can focus all of our energies on making the best content for you. So for this show, I'm cleaning out the email bag and answering all of your great questions that you've sent to me. Number one, Dawn in Baltimore writes, as I'm sure you're aware, Mailbox is ending. I need an alternative. In the last 12 hours, I've tried out both the native Gmail and Inbox apps, but there is one thing missing. Later, Google's inbox has the snooze function, but I am not a fan of the categories email. I loved Mailbox's ability to swipe and have an email come back hours, days, or weeks later when I was ready to handle that information. Please find me a new app for iOS that has a later function. Ask and you shall receive my friend Dawn from Baltimore. I use Outlook for iOS. To schedule an email for later, just swipe right. The schedule this message dialog box comes up and you can choose to see the email again in a few hours, this evening, tomorrow morning, or choose an exact time to schedule the precise moment when you would like to see the message again. Full disclosure, I already replied to Dawn's email with the Outlook for iOS suggestion and he wrote me back to say, I just assumed Outlook was only for Microsoft and and Exchange email. I had no idea it worked with Gmail, so I thought I would point that out too. I use Outlook for iOS with my Gmail accounts only. Number two, Blair from Seattle also wrote in. Blair is from the band Stubborn Sun, which is a great band name, by the way. He writes, I bought a tripod for my iPhone so I could take video of band practices. We're a rock band and our volume is too loud for the iPhone's recorder, resulting in distortion and clipping. Is there a way to lower the audio input gain so it doesn't max out? Blair even sent me a video of his band so I could see what it sounds like. Let's take a listen. I did a little research for Blair, and although you can adjust the settings in GarageBand on the Mac, it doesn't look like you can change the audio input gain on the app on iOS. I asked around the office for suggestions from the music creators I know, and Leo, Jason Howell, and Anthony Nielsen all suggested using a Shure microphone. It's $150, which could be beyond your budget, but it makes a good solution. The Shure mics connect via lightning cable jack in your iPhone. Blair wrote back to say that he might get the mic, but he also might start recording the audio with GarageBand on his Mac. Number three, Robert writes, I listen to music on my iPhone for the first two or three hours of my workday. I have over a thousand songs on my phone, not streaming. Why does it play the same songs every day when I shuffle? There's music I've never heard from my iPhone 4S to my 6 Plus. Both phones did it. I had to look this one up and I got one answer from John Brownlee over at Cult of Mac and corroborated elsewhere, and this answer seems legit. I tried it and it worked. When iTunes shuffles your music, it creates a randomly generated order of your music. That order is called a seed, and there's only one seed. That way, if you want to go back to listen to songs that just played, you can easily do that. Having only one seed also saves memory resources. To reshuffle, uncheck and recheck the shuffle button in iTunes. That will give you a new seed. If you don't do that, iTunes will start over at the beginning of the seed next time you press play on your iTunes, and you'll hear the same music. This episode is brought to you by Gazelle, the trusted online marketplace for buying and selling used electronics. Trade in your old device for cash or buy a certified pre-owned one or do both. For trade-in, simply visit gazelle.com, find your device and get an instant quote. Shipping is free and payment is fast. If you're looking to buy a certified pre-owned device, Gazelle has a variety of phones, iPads, and even Samsung Galaxy phones to choose from. Each device is fully inspected, backed by a 30-day return policy, and sold without a carrier contract. 
contract. Go to gazelle.com, see what your old device is worth, and check out the selections of certified pre-owned devices today. All devices have been put through a rigorous 30-point inspection process, ensuring that they are in perfect working order. Devices are available for support by all the major carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Give new life to used electronics, trade in for cash, or buy certified pre-owned. Visit gazelle.com today. Number four, Dan from Chesapeake, Virginia writes, I'm a longtime Android phone user who recently purchased an iPhone 6S. Is there an iOS Twit app that will connect to Chromecast? Yes, Dan, there are several. You can find the Twit apps for iOS at twit.tv slash app. You can also get Twit apps for your laptop or your desktop, for your TV, for your Windows phone, and even for your Android phone, which is also good for Dan since he revealed to me that he has switched back to Android. Wah, wah. The page will show you what apps offer support for Chromecast or AirPlay, how much they cost, and who created them. Some apps will just let you watch the Twit live stream where we spill all our secrets before and after the show, and some apps will only offer the on-demand content, and some will offer both. Number five is a stumper from Timothy in New York City. Timothy writes, I just bought this cheap trifold wallet portfolio style case for my iPhone 6S Plus from a vendor on the street. It was only $10, and since I change my case depending on my mood or planned activity, I decided to get it. It has slots for credit cards and places to put money. The problem is it has a magnetic closure, and I am worried about my credit cards and or other magnetic stripe cards. The magnet appears from testing to be on both flaps. Is there a way to test if this would damage my card without actually damaging my cards. I thought about using an expired card, but then I would not know if it worked since the card was expired. I'm a pretty technical person, and I apologize for the non-technical question. Thanks for the questions, Timothy, and thanks for sending the pictures along, too. Whether magnets damage magnetic strips on credit cards is one of the longest running debates on the internet. I fall on the side of no, they don't, but plenty of you would probably disagree with me. The only way to test is with a credit card that you don't use very often and that you don't mind ordering a new one. If the magnet doesn't work, the person working at the register can also enter the number. The good news is that this problem will be going away soon, along with all the online shopping we do. Now we have Apple Pay on our phones or our watches and our iPads, and we have cards with chips in them, and soon we'll be paying with everything with a chip installed directly into our brain. So use that case. It's very nice. So I bet that there are a lot of you who have lots of additional answers to all of these questions. You always do, and I always appreciate it. You can email them directly to me at megan at twit.tv, and I will read them on iOS Today, the show that also covers iPhones and which will not be going away anytime soon. But that does it for this episode and this show. Thanks so much for watching. All of the apps, links, and other info from the show can be found at twit.tv slash i5. That's where you'll find all of the episodes that I did and the ones that Sarah Lane did too. So check the archives to see how tiny phones used to be. It's funny. You can always still email questions or general feedback to me at megan at twit.tv. I am Megan Maroney. We'll see you on iOS Today, which you can watch live every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific or watch on demand whenever you want. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. <laughs>